Hello everyone. This video is about collimating your telescope indoors. I have a Celestron 6 SE motorized scope. I've been using it quite a bit this winter uh, to take some fairly short exposures of about 30 seconds using a makeshift wedge. Now I've been outside with the telescope uh, some nights where the temperature dropped below minus 20 Celsius. Uh, and uh, leaving the telescope outside for hours on end, taking these exposures seems to have done a number on it to the point where now comes spring, uh, I'm having some trouble uh, with focus. With these little ghost-shaped comas appearing in my images, making it hard for Deep Sky Stacker to pick up what is a, a star. So I thought about uh, how could I do collimation indoors. And the idea I came on was uh, making a makeshift star field using just a, a flat bitmap image uh, with individual pixels for stars and this uh, slightly larger uh, star shape uh, in the center to help with, uh, with the collimation and focusing process. I made other versions of, of this uh, star background with various densities and, and various brightnesses. So what I've done here is uh, I've set up my telescope in my basement at uh, one end, uh, pointing it across to the other end where I've placed a laptop showing this makeshift star field simulation. I'd say this is about uh, 35, maybe 40 feet away. And I was uh, pleasantly surprised that the telescope could pick up this, uh, this star field from that distance quite clearly once in focus. So here I'm showing uh, a defocused version uh, so that I could more readily be able to, to see the distortions in order to collimate the image. Now, as I mentioned, I did spend a, a bit of time the previous night outdoors doing the collimation, and it turns out I, I actually got it pretty close to where it should have been. So for all of my efforts doing this, uh, I ended up decollimating my telescope while fidgeting with it, and then after some time I was able to get it back to where I started. Uh, so this is more of a exercise in failure and then some success to see uh, how I could do this indoors, which actually did work. So um, what I'm doing here is uh, trying to figure out how to approach this collimation with the telescope at one end and, and the laptop at the other. And what I started doing was uh, putting my uh, backyard... Nikon software into live view mode, uh, which was quite hard to see, uh, it was quite dim, and then fiddling with, with the telescope with the three collimation screws, kind of trying to change one and then the other and then the third one and, and seeing what made a difference. So I'm fast forwarding through quite a bit of trial and error here. Uh, this process took quite a long time before I, I figured out uh, how to do this properly. And what I did pick up on was um, you should leave the, the uh, little crosshairs on uh, as that makes it easier to see what it is that you're, you're collimating. Now, with the crosshairs on, uh, the process I finally fell upon was to center the image of my quote-unquote star uh, in the center of the crosshairs and then take an exposure and check the outer stars for which direction uh, the uh, collimation was off in. So uh, where were the, the distortions pointing to? And then uh, using live view to adjust the collimation screws so that I could shift the image of the quote unquote star into the quadrant where the distortion was diffusing. 
So if it was diffusing to the right, uh, for example, if, uh, if the brighter or sharper part of the uh, star was to the left and then to the right it was fading away, then uh, I would have to shift uh, the image of the star to the right using the collimation screws. And what made this uh, kind of cool was that uh, with the live view and with this makeshift star, uh, eventually I, I kind of got the, the hang of um, adjusting the three screws so that uh, the makeshift star would kind of wander in the direction that I needed it to go to while I was able to tighten the screws at the same time. So I wasn't left in a situation where the collimation screws were, were loose. As, as that would cause problems in the future. So again, quite a bit of trial and error. Um, as I was working through this, uh, I'm, I'm also using a uh, Xbox controller uh, with CPWI software. So uh, tweaking how to best use that controller as, as it can be a little bit sensitive. Uh, the next to our mount uh, gearing sometimes has a bit of lag so you tend to overcompensate when trying to point in a specific direction and then you, you overshoot uh, but uh, eventually I was able to, to catch on to the fact that you just point the game stick in the direction of the star that you're trying to get to or get your scope to go to so here I've got the uh, the collimation to where I want it to be, and I'm double checking against uh, you know, the the classic unfocused view, uh, checking to see visually whether or not uh, the picture is is formed. The little donut is is uh, um, even across uh, all the way across, and and if it is circular, looks that way. Now, uh, what I did find helpful is um, having the wider star field help me to focus in on, on specific areas where, where the, the pattern was off. So here I'm using a, a uh, Batonov mask. Uh, I made it by downloading a template and then uh, tracing it out onto uh, a piece of plastic from a cheap three-ring binder seems to do the job. Now the uh, makeshift star field is, is rather dim so you have to take a, a longer term exposure to see whether or not the, uh, the focusing actually works. Yep, here we've got the uh, pattern. Looks like the star field is in focus a slightly longer exposure to uh, bring out the detail of that uh, focusing mask and that looks okay for what we need it to be right now so now checking the focused makeshift star field. Now I do like to center that, that star right in the middle because uh, the way that I disperse the stars in the in the field I, I want to see the um, effects of, of the uh, distortion around the edges they should be even in, in all of the corners and without a flattener you you would expect to see some distortion around those edges okay there it is <laughs> and like I said I'm, I'm pretty much back to where I started uh, except hopefully in the future now that I know how to do this, I can do this during the day without going outside at night. And it should take me a little bit less time in the comfort of, of my home instead of standing in the cold. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm switching out the uh, star field for one that's a little bit dimmer and more densely packed. Uh, frankly, because I was curious to see what that would look like. So uh, it was dim to the point where in live view you could not make, it out, make out any of the stars, but uh, here with a longer exposure, I thought this was actually pretty cool that from that distance the telescope was able to uh, pick up individual pixels as each of these stars is, uh, is a pixel in size. Uh, zooming in here. And as expected, we've got the distortions around the edges, but the center looks good. So, uh, seems that, that this approach works, and uh, I hope someone finds this useful.